Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about a class of compounds called aromatic compounds as exemplified by benzene and derivatives of benzene. In uh, 1825, benzene was first isolated by Michael Faraday as an a hydrocarbon that was unsaturated but that did not display the typical reactivity that one found of alkenes or alkynes. This is back in a time before they really knew too much about uh, chemical structure. But for example, if you take this molecule which they determined had a formula of C6H6, clearly an unsaturated compound, but reacted it with bromine or oxidation reagents uh, that were typical to react with double bonds. There was no reaction that took place. Some of the early structures that people thought about were things like prismane, which would have lots of rings, unsaturation, C6H6, but no double bond character. Dewar benzene, that might be expected to react like double bonds, uh, but that was another structure which was proposed for benzene. It was in 1865 when Kekulé proposed the structure of benzene as having six-membered ring with alternating double bonds. Six carbons in a ring with three double bonds. If you have alternating single and double bonds, you might expect those bonds to have different bond lengths. However, benzene has a structure which is completely symmetric. All the bonds have identical lengths of 1.39 angstroms, um, and Kekulé proposed a structure that has those double bonds alternating back and forth. We know now, having a modern idea about structure, that those electrons in the double bonds are conjugated and in resonance. So we can draw resonance forms, not discrete intermediates. Uh, but benzene is a flat planar molecule. Sometimes it's written with a circle in the middle to indicate the delocalization of the six pi electrons that are involved in the ring. Every atom of benzene ring has a p orbital on it. It's sp2 hybridized and the electrons are completely conjugated. So it is not an equilibrium of alternating double bond structures that Kekulé first proposed, but a flat ring with one structure where we can draw different resonance forms. What was observed about the reactivity is that things like bromine, which reacts readily with double bonds, did not react with benzene. So you do not get addition of Br2 across a double bond of the benzene ring. Instead, when the Br2 is activated with a Lewis acid catalyst, such as FeBr3, that bromine does a substitution reaction, substitutes a hydrogen for a bromine, with the byproduct being HBr. So the difference is that in substitution reactions we've talked about in the past is that it's not a nucleophilic substitution. We have actually substituted an H plus for a Br plus. So we're adding Br plus and taking off H plus from the benzene ring. We maintain the integrity of the conjugated pi system of the benzene ring. So that was an interesting unusual reactivity that was unexpected for unsaturated compounds of the time. So what we know now, of course, is that benzene has a planar structure, resonance forms where the electrons are delocalized in the pi system, and the electron density of the benzene ring is localized in that pi system. So when we think about reactivity of benzene ring, uh, that reactivity is going to occur from those electrons in the pi bonds. That being said, there's an unusual amount of stability associated with aromatic compounds that we need to think about. That being said, there's an unusual amount of stability associated with aromatic compounds that do not exist in, say, for example, the acyclic hexatriene molecule. This will react readily with things like Br2 to add bromine, for example, to the double bond. These are very reactive and not stable, whereas benzene rings are very stable and have different reactivity. We can recognize aromatic compounds because they have to satisfy three requirements. They have to be in a ring that's completely planar. It has to be a system which is fully conjugated. So we have pi system which is conjugated, or in other words, a p orbital on every atom of that ring, whether it's a carbon or a heteroatom. And in order to have this aromatic stabilization, it has to follow the Huckel rule. That is, the number of electrons that are in that delocalized pi system has to be uh, 4n plus 2, where n is any integer. So if n equals 0, uh, the Huckel rule would say you need two electrons. If n equals 1, 
that would be six electrons. If n equals two, that would be 10 electrons. Those would all have aromatic stabilization. If, for example, you had four pi electrons or eight pi electrons, those are not stabilized by this aromatic stabilization and are not aromatic compounds. So Huckel described uh, the requirement for a specific number of electrons in those uh, pi systems to provide that stabilization. And although you don't need to worry about it for this class, it does have to do with the molecular orbitals for those pi systems and the symmetry of those orbitals and how we place electrons into those orbitals. So let's take a look at benzene versus cyclobutadiene. This is a ring, so it check, it's a ring compound. Um, there's a p orbital or an sp2 hybridization on every single bond, so it's conjugated, check. And the number of electrons, there's two electrons in each of those pi bonds, which are delocalized, so that's six pi electrons. It fits the Huckel rule, so that would have aromatic stabilization. If we look at something like cyclobutadiene, it's a ring, so we can check that off. Uh, there's a p orbital, or sp2 hybridization, on every single carbon, so it's fully conjugated. However, there's only four pi electrons. There's two electrons in that double bond and two electrons in that double bond. That actually is not the right number of electrons to satisfy the Huckel rule, thus it's not an aromatic compound. As a matter of fact, benzene is very stable, whereas cyclobutadiene doesn't even exist at room temperature. It reacts too readily with itself even to do dimerization reactions. Well, here are some other examples of aromatic and not aromatic compounds. Again, all of these do have ring structures, so they have rings, they're fully conjugated, there's a, a p orbital on every single atom, even if that's through a plus charge or a minus charge lone pair. However, some of these are aromatic and have extra stabilization, and some are not. And that has to do with the number of pi electrons. So the cyclopropenyl cation has two pi electrons. There's a p orbital on every bond. And if we look at the cation, there's an empty p orbital, and then there's a filled uh, p orbital. But that is delocalized in a ring that would have extra aromatic stabilization. If instead of an empty orbital, we take that extra orbital and add a lone pair, or in other words, put a minus charge on it, that would then involve those two electrons having to be delocalized with the two electrons from the pi bond. So that would have four pi electrons and is not aromatic. Uh, same thing, cyclopentenyl cation that has four pi electrons, although it's fully conjugated and has a ring, it's not aromatic because it doesn't have the right structure, whereas if you have a lone pair, that ends up giving six pi electrons, it's an aromatic molecule, just like benzene. Or if you add another carbon, you have to have a p orbital, but that has six pi electrons from the two double bond, two electrons in each of the double bonds, six pi electrons, it's aromatic. Cyclooctatetraene would have eight pi electrons. It's not aromatic. These are some examples for you to see where this electron counting matters for aromaticity or not aromaticity. What we see is that these molecules circled in red are relatively stable, whereas the other ones that are listed here with blue are particularly reactive. Well, there are lots of different substituted aromatic compounds based on benzene. Uh, for example, we can see here benzaldehyde. Um, this actually has the taste and smell of almonds. A lot of organic molecules that are aromatic were named aromatic because they have particular aromatic qualities to them. So cinnamaldehyde is an aromatic molecule derived from cinnamon. Um, you can see here this substituent on here uh, smells like cinnamon. Naphthalene is two fused aromatic benzene rings. Um, this is what is the constituent of mothballs, and it has, a, of course, a very strong odor. Benzoic acid is a benzene ring with a carboxylic acid group. There are lots of common names associated with benzene derivatives. For example, toluene includes a benzene with a methyl group. Xylenes refers to a benzene with two methyl groups on it, and they could be substituted in different places. Phenol is a benzene ring with an OH group. Aniline is a benzene ring with an NH2 group. Some of these benzene rings can be larger and fused together, such as the polyaromatic hydrocarbons, which you've probably heard about. Um, many of these tend to be carcinogenic because they oxidize in your liver and then embed into your DNA and cause DNA damage. This creates tumorigenesis and uh, to, uh, cancers can develop. 
Um, this particular polyaromatic hydrocarbon is a main carcinogen found in tobacco smoke. And there are other PAHs which occur when you, for example, grill uh, meat. So hamburgers do contain some PAHs as well. Aromatic rings are embedded into lots of different natural products and biologically active molecules, such as hormones, such as estrone. You can see here there's a benzene ring attached into the larger structure. Uh, the drug Viagra or sildenafil, this has a benzene ring in it as well. Um, I should point out that there's another ring in this molecule which is aromatic, and that has to do with this ring. This ring has heteroatoms in it. If we consider the lone pair on that nitrogen, with the other two double bonds, there's six pi electrons all in a ring that can all delocalize through a planar flat system. That's an aromatic ring as well. And speaking of heterocyclic compounds, depending on whether the heterocycle in the ring has a double bond to it already in the structure that's drawn or not would dictate whether that lone pair is actually able to delocalize into the pi system. So if we take a look at a molecule such as pyridine, which is here shown on the left. Pyridine is a six-membered ring benzene analog where one of the carbons has been replaced with nitrogen. This nitrogen uh, has a double bond to it, so it's got a p orbital. The extra lone pair has to be 90 degrees apart from that pi system. Um, so the lone pair itself is not delocalized in the pi system and not counted as part of the aromatic uh, pi system electrons. Instead, it's the two, four, six electrons of the double bonds which are involved in the aromatic stabilization. Contrast that with the five membered ring. This is a ring which contains nitrogen, but notice in the structure I've drawn, there is no double bond written to the nitrogen. That means the lone pair of the nitrogen is part of the delocalization. So the two electrons from one double bond, the two electrons from the second double bond, and then the two electrons from the lone pair are all conjugated with each other, again providing a six pi electron system, which gets aromatic stabilization. So that lone pair is in resonance with the pi system and involved in that. Oxygen is the same way. Oxygen has a lone pair which is involved in the pi system. If I draw this five-membered ring with two double bonds, two of the electrons of the oxygen lone pairs are involved. That would be those two. The other one, again, has to be orthogonal or 90 degrees apart and cannot be part of the aromatic stabilization. So you only count one of the lone pairs when you think about how many electrons are involved in delocalization. There are many, many different kinds of heterocycles. Uh, this, for example, has two nitrogens in it. One of them has a lone pair that's delocalized in the pi system to make six pi electrons, whereas the other one has a double bond to it, so its lone pair is orthogonal and not involved in the delocalization. And there are many kinds of biologically active molecules uh, that have nitrogen heterocycles and oxygen heterocycles that are aromatic. Here are examples of the DNA bases that make up the DNA code, AGTC, and you can see that there are aromatic rings involved in these. And if you draw different forms of these, you can have flat aromatic rings of one sense or another in these. And if you take a look at DNA structure, they are all flat and stack upon each other in the center of the DNA helix. Well, as I said, fused aromatic rings are, are quite common, and they can take many, many different structures. Um, they are aromatic, and the thing that is common among all of them is that there is delocalization, or p orbitals, all over on every single atom of a fused organic system. So the aromatic systems could be as large as coronine, uh, benzopyran, anthracene, naphthalene. Uh, and if you get very, very large structures, these are actually different forms of carbon. So aromatic carbon, this is just carbon. Carbon that we call graphite are planar sheets of carbon atoms which are arranged in six-membered rings, and they are all sp2 hybridized and aromatic. Graphite has some very interesting properties due to the fact that it's these sheets of aromatic carbons that provide stability, and actually there's some physical properties such as the ability to um, lubricate or be slippery as well. Uh, these aromatic systems can stack on top of each other and provide different types of supramolecular structures as well.
Carbon, aromatic carbon sheets can be rolled up into different shapes. Um, if they're large enough, they can maintain their delocalization and aromatic nature. Um, this occurs when we have carbon nanotubes or in the famous C60 Buckminster fullerene molecule. These are other forms of aromatic carbon uh, that make for very interesting materials and have interesting properties.